All right, I am here to talk space opera with Robert Jashanik, who is leading a project that I'm going to be doing a story for. I am super excited about Space 1975. It is space opera with a 70s flair. I have been working, actually, tossing around ideas for his story. Um, and so I thought I'd start by saying, Bob, why this project? What led to it? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> well, I just was, I was, I don't know, trying to think of something cool uh, for uh, some kind of a space opera book because I wanted to write something about space opera. And uh, I, was, I was thinking about different uh, aspects of different time periods that uh, I'm fond of. And the 1970s came to mind. Uh, it was one of my favorite and strangest periods, uh, <laughs> historically speaking, culturally yeah, yeah, speaking. It was yeah. just a really interesting time. And, uh, and I thought, you know, that might be an interesting uh, way to add something different to this, to this book, to this project. And I thought, you know, that could be really cool. And then, of course, I remember the old Space 1999 TV show from that same period. Oh, I love that show. Yeah, me too. Me too. It was uh, it was really unique in so many ways, and uh, Martin Landau and Barbara Bain, of course, starred in that, and 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 I loved that, and I thought Space 1975. It just popped into my head, yeah. as these things do, as you know, and uh, I thought, you know, maybe there's something to that. So uh, I just started riffing on that and coming up with ideas. I thought, you know, there's a lot there that we could do, mm -hmm. and uh, just decided to to jump off from that point and 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 see if anybody else was interested and maybe try to find some funding through the Kickstarter platform. And, and the kick, Kickstarter is yeah. doing pretty well so far. And as you can tell, I decided to do the space opera <laughs> thing because space opera is cool. I'm really excited about it. So tell I me about it. tell me about some of the people that are going to be writing for the anthology or that you hope are oh. going to be writing for. Wow. We have a great, a great slate of authors. And, and that's another reason why I really want this book to go forward, because I personally want to read these stories. I mean, I can't imagine some of the stuff that's going to come out of these incredible writers. We have, uh, for, for some of our core authors, of course, we have uh, Dean Wesley Smith, nice, who's uh, a real uh, indie publishing force and uh, has written, oh my God, I don't know, hundreds of stories like yourself and, and also many, many novels. And right now, he writes a science fiction, a space opera series called The Cedars Universe. So, oh, cool. Dean Wesley Smith. And uh, let's see, who else do we have? Craig Martell, who's yeah. also a big name in the indie publishing science fiction field. And one of the key guys in the 20 Books to 50K organization, which is, a you know, as you know, huge uh, oh, yeah. indie publishing organization. And uh, he's jumping in. And then we also have uh, some other incredible names, including uh, Ian Douglas, uh, who is also known as Bill Keith, William H. Keith. Nice. He writes a lot of science fiction. He's written a lot of Battletech uh, licensed fiction in the past. And currently he's best known, I think, for his, uh, his Star Carrier series and his War Strider series. He writes a lot of military science fiction and also space opera. So he's a New York Times bestselling author. I'm excited to have him on, on the project as well. And uh, we also have, oh my God, who don't we have? Peter David, who's a, a, a very well-known comic book writer and fiction writer. He's been at it forever. He's written incredibly long runs of The Incredible Hulk and X Factor. And he's written episodes of Babylon 5 and, uh, and uh, Crusade for J. Michael Straczynski. And he co-created Space Cases with Bill Moomy, who, of course, from Lost in Space, yeah. the name we're all familiar with uh, from that era. And also, uh, oh my goodness, who else do we have here? Oh, Mark Scott Zickery, who's uh, a well-known uh, science fiction screenwriter. Right. And he's written episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and many other shows. And in fact, he's maybe well, most well-known for writing the, uh, the story that became the episode Far Beyond the Stars, which was regarded as maybe the best episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. So we got all those guys and uh, Mike Barron, who's a comic book uh, writer who co-created uh, the Nexus series. And, oh my God, who else? Oh, Mark Leslie Lefebvre, who's another science oh, fiction yeah. writer. He was nominated for an Aurora Award in Canada. 
And uh, he also does these quirky videos uh, that he gets posted on, uh, on not just social media and YouTube, but also on television, like oh, gosh, yeah. and the national te television in Canada. Um, and then uh, let's see, Annie Reed, Ron Collins, and oh, there's who else that I want to mention? There are so many people involved. You've got Kevin, I believe. Kevin J. No, Anderson? No. Not this oh. time. He was. Okay, not this time. He wanted to. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, maybe he'll watch this and be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Um, Kevin, no. we're talking about you. <laughs> All right, but next time, next time. So the more reason yeah. for this to succeed is that you can bring yep. him next time. And you know, you know, Kevin, he, this is yeah. like, as he said, this is his kind of story. He really wanted to write one for yeah. this. Uh, but uh, surprise, he's way too busy. <laughs> he has some things going on. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing an anthology right now, or at least kind of in the, the first moments of thinking about it and so i've been pinging a few people and i i will say i'm getting a lot of folks who are just like this is a busy year for me and it's i know for me even though there's not conventions uh in yeah. the same way uh you're busier than ever i mean this weekend i've been in salt lake city as well as seattle uh, wow yeah Holy that's great it's, it's, isn't it isn't it amazing how that time just fills in though yeah. Yeah. Oh God. Yes. Well, and it's interesting because <laughs> usually when you go off to a convention, you're on the road, right? And you're not worried about house stuff. And you're like, if I want to spend the evening in my hotel room with a glass of wine and the bathtub reading a crappy paperback, which is one of my <laughs> great joys in life, yeah. I can do that. And here it's more like, well, dishwasher, somebody needs to unload. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. That's it one is. of the things. Yeah, it about is. working from home. So do you think uh, maybe one reason uh, people are drawn to space opera is because it's got this wide open space? I mean, because I know there's lots of space to write in there. Boy, there really is. I mean, the possibilities are truly infinite, as they, as they always are with all science fiction. But I think in space opera, they're infinite, and yet there's a structure to it mm -hmm. and there are tropes and expectations that, that the readers bring to that. We know that there will be, it, it's, it's like a fairy tale sort of thing, almost like a, a little bit on the fantasy side of science fiction. Um, not necessarily uh, super hard and, and uh, uh, very, you know, rigorously scientifically researched, <laughs> it right. can be whatever. Um, within reason, I think, <laughs> but uh, it, I think it makes it exciting. It opens up the possibilities, yeah. you know, and I agree. There's a lot of space there. And I think there is a lot of room for these stories that, that we're hoping to tell in this book and, uh, and, and a lot of, a lot of room to apply the um, cultural and historical and thematic aspects of that decade, the 1970s to this vast mm -hmm. wide open uh, palette that mm -hmm. we have. And, and I think it's an exciting, uh, there's some really exciting possibilities. Do you have anything that uh, when people are writing for this, that they're going to, that you're going to be particularly, A, either particularly looking for or particularly excited about, or B, anything where you're going to look at the first page and just go, nope. <laughs> well, if, if they um, misread the guidelines, they give me something <laughs> in the 1770s. Yeah. Then yeah. <laughs> Well, and it is true that there are certain um, there are certain key visual uh, elements mm -hmm. and, and things, uh, stereotypical elements that really come immediately to mind when we think of the '70s: uh, leisure suits, platform shoes, mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. well, they, they, the traditional uh, stereotypical things. So, if I see too many of those things, I might have to pick which stories uh, apply them in the most creative ways and just say, you know, uh, maybe go in a slightly different direction here and come in with something cooler. I think I think that's really smart advice, actually, for just overall for writing for anthologies. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go with the first idea that comes to mind, uh, a lot of it's come to a lot of other people's uh, mind. I was doing a near future anthology at one point, and I had three groups uh, that showed up, and one of them was a you know pandemic story, various people told, and another was. Uh, underwater, <laughs> and the third, bizarrely enough, was a future in which people were consuming dogs. Oh! And, <laughs> oh! 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 
know, right? Wow. And I got like five stories featuring this. Mm. And, you know, and, but the other problem with that is, of course, as an editor, I knew if I ran more than one of those, it would become, oh, she did the anthology where people are eating dogs all over the place. And I really, you know, that's another anthology for, for somebody else. I don't want that anthology. I don't know if but I want my, to read that one. <laughs> uh, but we did, I did keep one of the stories. One of the stories made it into it. But, it was like, all the good dogs have been eaten, which I thought was just oh, such a good title. Yeah. I'll it was say. a good story. It's a good story. But yeah. yeah. Well, that could work. Yeah. But maybe not an entire anthology of just that. Maybe. No, no. Yeah. So now, now you're <laughs> going to get like but... space opera dog eating story. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and it's funny you should mention the, the pandemic because that, I'll be honest with you, that was my first thought for an anthology theme. I'm like, it's the pandemic. Let's talk about ways in which, and I'm like, nah, lots of people yeah. are doing that. And yeah. I think people want to break out of that for a little bit and think about other stuff. I know that's how I feel. <laughs> I, think, I think right now is a really good time, uh, not just for stories that are kind of entertaining and comforting, but also stories that are hopeful. Yes. Because God knows we've got enough dreariness. Uh, thank you yes. very much. I'll hand some back if anybody feels like they need some. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, some sparkle, some yeah, style, some swagger. Seems. Let's, let's go easy on the existentialism for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. We need some, we need some upbeat stuff. And, and I do have to say, too, I, I hope that um, one of the things I'm looking for in these stories and one of the ideas that behind the anthology is to um, unite the um, aspects of the past culturally, historically, thematically with um, the, 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 the present day ethos and with mm -hmm. the, the visuals and the excitement of uh, space opera fiction yeah. and science fiction tomorrow. And maybe I hope to cast in some way some perspective on that some of the sense. things that are happening today and, and sort of show some of the universal um, things that have happened in, in the past and that could happen in the, or are likely to happen in the future that sort of connect up all these things. That makes I, sense. Yeah, I do, I, I do think we can learn from, from you know, things that have gone before and we can see we've been through some tough times. In fact, there were tough times in the 70s. As, as oh, some yeah. Of them well, <laughs> and, well, I mean, so, it, yeah. It's always, there's always going to be, you're going to be able to find perspectives and particularly when you dig a little bit. I think uh, sometimes we are given a very uh, sort of facile version of history uh, yep. by often our own history books, but particularly by television and other kind of uh, watered down media. Uh, and so, yeah, digging is often where you're going to find, for example, the this, this story of the Stonewall riots is... Yeah take that and do something in space opera. I don't know what, but I, I think. <laughs> oh, there are a lot of great possibilities right yeah. there. You just hit yeah. one. I think yeah. that's a great, yeah, right there. That's really cool. There are, there are so many things. There are so many directions that we could go. And, and I also hope that to see a real depth of character and, and strength of character and, and, you know, sort of that, that, that same kind of uh, character development that came out of, some of the uh, great films of the 70s, 70s, oh, the yeah. 1970s, I think were, uh, it was a great time for movies mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and not just the blockbusters that sort of started eating up the, the end of that decade, but some of the great dramatic films and comedic films of that time that really got down into the human animal and explored what it means to be human. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I hope to see some of that in these stories as well. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I think I'm going to close things down at that because I think that's a good tantalizing point. I will put the link to the Kickstarter in the description, and I hope that folks will go support it. My story features sentient jewels. If you want to see them become real, I, I will write them only for this book. So. All right. Great. <laughs> I can't wait to read it. I, I really, that's why I really hope folks will back this and help us to move this forward. And, and I, I know we can do it. We're at 40% yeah. and it, just, it feels good. It, it, people, I'm getting a lot of great response and we have a lot of great rewards and people can really jump in there and, and help bring something cool into being. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Bob. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kat. Great talking to you. And